at a place called Boone's Pond in the heart of Arkansas, you're about to see the search for a champion. It is the Super Retriever Series Championship Series 4. We're halfway through in selecting four dogs to move on to the finals. Right now, an amateur is in third place against a seasoned pro who's trying to sweep all four places in the final four. What will happen next? Stay right here. And welcome back to the semifinal round at Boone's Pond near Mayflower, Arkansas. Craig O'Neill joined by Justin Tackett, and we have quite a drama taking place, including a great performance by an amateur, Mike Gibson, and his dog, Shady. Justin? Oh, she's incredible. A lot of talent. I'm not sure that Gibson's the handler. I, how do I say this? I don't know that Mike can pilot her to a championship yet, but she's got a lot of horsepower. When you take a look at the Yukonuba Virtual Course, it's something that an amateur should excel at because it's all about relationship. This is a very kooky, weird uh, kind of a, it, well, it's a straight hunting scenario. Out of ground blinds, you see the marks, they're everywhere out there. Nothing extremely difficult. That blind's gonna really test control, especially when you consider that that Mark II is a poison bird. You pick that up, you're going to the house. So, I would expect amateurs to excel at this point. One heck of a challenge, and we're gonna show you the first dog here that can really accept this challenge. This is an old pro, Savannah. It. It's handled by Clint Johnson. This is his home turf. He's See from El Paso, Arkansas. Savannah has been there. Savvy, savvy duck dog, savvy duck dog test. If anybody can hammer this thing, she can. Look at that concentration right there on the stand. And this is really about steadiness. Savannah. Look at her. You see her just kind of track with that gun barrel? Clint loves to brag on her. Savannah. Savannah belonged to a client of mine. He uh, had a dog trained by me back in what, 1994, I guess. And he brought her back to be bred, and I talked her into breeding to a dog that I had out there for a very short period of time. But that ended up being Savannah's daddy. And she went with the client until she was seven months old. She belonged to Mr. Brian Ball. And at seven months old, Brian came to me and told me that he really believed we had something special there, and I did too and he thought that there's no way he could take the dog on the journey that it needed to go on. So he decided to sell her to me outright. I took her. We started training for hunt tests. She's now the most consistent dog in the history of UKC with 84 consecutive finish passes. She's a AKC master hunter. She's an SRS winner. She's made the semifinals more than any dog in the history of the SRS. She has actually been a dream to run. She got me where I am today. But Savannah really has no pedigree. She has bad hips. We still run her today. All the veterinarians tell me that running her is what keeps her living. They say if we don't run her, then she'll go down. She won't have enough muscle to support those hips. So we keep running, and lo and behold, here we are in the crown again. I don't know anybody who's been there more times than Savannah. She's awful cranky. She gets older. She likes to go to bed at a certain time, and if you don't go to bed at that time, she's going to let you know about it. She's a wonderful family pet, wonderful competitor, and maybe the finest hunting dog I've ever seen in my life. And really doing well. Got two faults on the go bird, but looking good, Justin. She got a little wide on the blind here, and that's really going to cost her. But, you know, and I, and I doubt she's going to make the finals at this point, but I got to tell you, one of my most favorite dogs, I, I just love her to death because her heart is so big, and everything that Clint said about her, um, it may sound like he was really kind of tooting his own horn for his own dog, but she really is. She, she's something extremely special. Everybody pulls for her. She's going to wind up with about four faults on mark three, and that's going to bring her total to 33. It's going to put her right on the bubble in oh. fourth place. Good job, Savannah. Everybody pulling for this dog, and Clint hugging her like, well. She's his own dog, man. He right. loves her. He loves her like a member of the family. There you see it's Savannah in fourth, and we've got so much more coming up, including a boy named Pasha. The Super Retriever Series is brought to you by Avery. Welcome to your life. Yuganuba, make a good dog great. 
Dogtra, world's finest e collars And by these fine sponsors, Ducks Unlimited, Zinc Calls, Dog Lovers Wine Club, and by the heart of Arkansas. Welcome back to Boone's Pond near Mayflower, Arkansas, in the heart of Arkansas, and it's Series 4 of our Crown Championship, and we're bringing Pasha, a boy named Pasha, to the line, Justin. Incredible dog, very different name, but this dog has incredible, incredible horsepower. Pasha's six years old. It's an unusual name, and I did not know what Pasha meant, but it means Peter. He's the boy dog with the girl name. Um, that's how everybody knows it. You know, I inherited the name. And uh, he's Pasha 25, so there must have been 24 Pashas before him. Uh, Pasha is bred, I think he has litter made to four or five field champion, amateur field champions. And his pedigree is, is spectacular to say the least. He's out of Lean Mac. And a female that's a field champion, amateur field champion called Candlewood's Rita Reynolds. Pasha. Pasha is, uh, is a duck dog. And What's, what's kind of unique about Curtis and his family is, you know, Curtis just kind of wanted him in shape to duck hunting. We got Posh in to get him in, in shape for duck season. And so let's run him a couple times. I said, you know, Curtis, here's the deal. He's, he's only ever picked up ducks in tests and field trials. And he was blinking a lot of the ATB birds on me. And I said, the first two or three SRSs, it's gonna be probably pretty ugly. Well, in Firewater, it was pretty ugly because he missed a mark, and I'd say he was over 600 yards when I seen him going up the hill. He looked like a little bitty cow that far out. I've always circled Huntsville as his, his time. I said, I don't know if he's gonna do any good, but that's when we're gonna see what we got. So we went to Huntsville, and in the first series, he kind of, he did okay, he got there. And in the second series, he looked real good. And then when he went to the third series in, in the long mark, I go, I've never had him out this far. Oh. and. Truthfully, in the semis and the finals, uh, he was just unbelievable. I mean, I mean, I knew the talent was there, and it come out that day, and he showed what he was. But you know, it took me several hours to get a hold of Curtis, which was kind of funny. And I said, Curtis, he goes, what? We won. I told the boys at the duck camp he was just better than a duck dog. I kept telling them he was better than that. So it was funny, so he started calling all his duck hunting buddies and they were giving him a hard time about, you know, an old duck dog wins, wins the SRS. Uh, Pasha's personality, he is by far the biggest clown on my truck. Uh, he thinks he has to eat first, thinks he has to be let out first. He's not a fighter, but he's always picking on somebody. I don't think he can whoop anybody, but he's always, he's always messing with somebody. His intensity, his drive. Uh, Curtis tells me, you know, when they shoot two or three hundred ducks over him a year, that I mean, he he's a lot, He just he's infatuated. He can't get enough of it. He's the best darn duck dog I've ever been hunting with. He's uh, he's just understands the game, enjoys it, and uh, every morning he wakes up and he's ready to go from uh, November first through December the thirty-first. That's all he's thinking about is going duck hunting. He is truly an animal that loves the game. Incredible, incredible horsepower. Oh, yeah. And I tell you, once Steinman gets the reins and the bit pulled up tight and everything gets rolling in the right direction, he's going to be an incredible force. And what you got there was an indication of Steinman's strategy, how he takes each dog and plots a course for that dog, and Pasha is matching the script that Steinman wrote for this dog. No wonder Steinman is so successful. Yeah, and really what Steinman's got here is a incredibly successful Division One athletic program, a feeder system, you know, where he just keeps feeding and feeding. 24 faults on Mark Three. Good job, Pasha. You're in third place. You got an owner who can't believe it. I got to tell you, I had butterflies today. I uh, I used to race uh, race cars professionally for years, and uh, uh, today when I first saw uh, Pasha jump up on the platform, I had the the race jitters uh, for the first time in many years. So it was uh, it was really exciting to see. Uh, great anticipation. Great to watch the other dogs run. Uh, it's just been a treat to be here today. Are you kidding me? Look at the leaderboard, Justin. Steinman's got the top three dogs. Dominance. Sheer dominance. Can anyone stop the Steinman train? We're going to find out coming up.
Little Rock, Arkansas, as the old timers are warming up for the finals of the Ducks Unlimited Superfly competition. This is Riverfest going on, and Justin, we have great duck hunting weather, but it's not great weather for a festival. Yeah, I was going to see how you were going to pull this out. You know, we've got the little guys calling ducks. Last year we had about 500. This year I think we're down to about 20, 25, and they're battling the rain. You got Jimbo out there with DU promoting ducks and kids and everything that's good in the world. And if you're here today, you'll love it. We did not break the Guinness <laughs> record, but we did have a good time. You get the feeling all those kids will advance on and become hunters. If nothing else, maybe duck call. I'm telling you, it's absolutely unbelievable. Look at the rain. I mean, it's pouring in buckets. I like the intensity. <laughs> Well, it was a good time, and we'll go back to the docks later. But right now, we got some more business to attend to. We're going to show you David Wolf bringing his dog, Willow. David is an amateur coming in here. Outstanding dog, lots of talent. This is something they weren't prepared for. As you can see, Willow just said to heck with all of it. I'm going to get it. It was rough and tough on her. She just broke early, really put her behind the eight ball. He got her back, and then here we go with some more rodeos. At least Willow avoided the poison bird, but unfortunately, Willow overcompensated. So did David. They're too far too right. Too far right. You know, I mean, just it just went downhill from there, and it just started to unravel. And when it does, and it gets that bad, the judges are going to say, hey, you got to come home. He gets disqualified. So that brings in Clint Johnson and his dog, Rudy. And Clint and this dog, so professional. But again, you're going to see the hazards of the pressure of the finals or semifinals and this tough course. I mean, the judges just absolutely took it to Rudy and, and, and just just unraveled his little brain. Got off to a tough start too, Justin. Yeah, I mean, he just, it just it, it, he was so underzealous, for lack of a better way of putting it. You know, <laughs> Willow was the opposite direction. He was the, it just blew him up so much that he just, he didn't, he didn't know what to do. You know, he just said, I'll just sit here. And it just left Clint shaking his head, looking for a better day. That brings up Bobby Wills and another accomplished dog. Nav. That's incredible. Lots of horsepower again. This is the kind of dog you want. And I know he's been in this environment a lot. His owner's a great, big, huge duck and goose hunter over in West Tennessee. And he knows what he's doing. He's been on a rough stand before. Look at the concentration Nav's got. He's wanting to run, but he's got enough discipline to stay on the stand. Nav! Don't go until Bobby says, well, what he just said. And off Big he goes. Big sin. Does great on those marks, but he gets to the blind. And then it just slow, starts to slowly and surely become unraveled. He, he, having trouble here, and he wants to go there, and he's here and there, and he just can't get him to slow down, relax, and focus. So whereas Clint and Rudy got off to a rough start, Nav got off to a great start, but then look at it. You watch the faults accumulate on the blind. It was just too much. I don't know if the the marks kind of ate it into the whole deal and just started piling and compiling, and then boom, all of a sudden he just kind of exploded on that blind. 85 faults for the series, 192 total. He is not going to make it to the final four, which brings back Lyle Steinman, his dog Coot. This one's another accomplished animal for Lyle Steinman. Whether you want to go long, short, you want to sit tight, it doesn't matter. Coot can do it all and do it with the very best of them. And he's seeing the whole picture. Look at that. It's like he's got his videotape recorder going. It's all working. I mean, it's just all hitting on every cylinder. Coot can do it all. He went out here, smashes this mark. Absolutely just obliterated it. And, and believe it or not, at 63 yards and it being the last bird down, it should be easy, but it pretty much demolished the majority of the field. Keep in mind, the man you're watching has the top three dogs so far. He's looking to put this one in oh. the top four. But now this one's getting a little temptation. Right. You see the bird, the poison bird right there to the left. He has to get him off of it, but he also has to get him in the water right here. So he needs a right back right here. There you go, big dog. Oh, no. It's like Coot heard you. It's like Coot could hear what you were saying. Gets into the water and keeps ah! on running. That dog is smarter and more talented than most people, by far. So it doesn't surprise me. Coot and Steinman still rocking, rolling. I mean, what? what Come on. can you stop? I don't think he's, he's just not stoppable. 31 faults on oh, the series. Incredible. 102 total. Puts him at number two on the leaderboard. Lyle Steinman is dominant. Are we going to see a Steinman sweep? Who's going to stop him? He's got the final four. I don't know if anybody can stop him, but there's one shot, and his name is Chris Hagen. But get this, Lyle Steinman has one more dog to run <laughs> when we come back. <laughs> Thank you.
The Super Retriever Series has been brought to you by Avery, welcome to your life. Yukonuba, make a good dog great. Max Prairie Wings, America's premier waterfowl outfitter. And by these fine sponsors, Mountaintop Custom Kennels, ProDrive, Creative Answer, and Splash Dogs. Welcome back to Boone's Pond, Mayflower, Arkansas, and Justin Tackett. We're watching one of the greatest performances in the young history of the Super Retriever Series Crown Championship, Wild Steinman. What else can you say? I mean, he's got four, possibly five after River here, and she's as good as they get, and a past champion. And like all the dogs that Lyle Steinman has brought to the line, River shows great concentration and athletic ability and enthusiasm. One right after the other, they're right out of the Steinman mold. Mark four with 24 faults. River walks away with 69 and puts herself right in number four. Steinman is looking at the final four. Only one man can come between Steinman and an all Steinman final four and that's Chris Aiken. And when you really think about it, Canucks here, he's about eight years old, and Bailey is the other dog, who's a very young dog. And so, oh, this is not how you want it to start off. Canuck comes in there beside him, and he's a gun dog. He should be used to, he should understand this concept of leaving directly from the platform to the bird. So it's really put him in a serious, serious, tough position. But he's one to do it, he's one to get there. Chris really thought this would be the dog that would put him on the final four, but Canuck has his problems, only, although he only gets 12 faults on the blind. Very nice blind. All Chris Aiken's dogs always run great blinds, but this mark, a lot of memory just wasn't enough. So he's got one hope and one hope only. You're watching Chris Aiken bring the youngest dog on his truck. This is Bailey, only four years old. Chris knows this has got to be the performance of this dog's life. She's got to play above and beyond better than she's ever played to slide in here. A long shot at best. So young with so much pressure to break up the Steinman run. She's a duck dog. She's been here. But it takes more than talent. It takes more than training. It takes more than luck. you got to have experience. Bailey! Bailey was born uh, uh, in 04. When Bailey was born, she's owned by Bubba Harold. He's a custom home builder in Collierville, Tennessee. And uh, we've trained several dogs for Bubba. And Bubba's the prime example of what we normally get into. Bubba's a fantastic guy. He just, just, just love him to death. He just wanted a duck dog. Just wanted something to go pick up his ducks. And we got that. And, and this, this, we just kept going up the ladder and up the ladder. And he saw potential and he loves her. I mean, when she's at home during the off season, uh, you know, she rides in the back seat of his F-250, goes to the office, goes to work, goes duck hunting with him. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a great. He just, he's crazy about her as I was, her mama and her daddy. And she's super emotional deal for me because she's a, she's a very young dog. She's only four years old. Qualify for the crown. I mean, Boomer was four years old when, when, when he first won a Super Retriever Series. When he won a Great Door Games, that was unheard of uh, to be that young and, and do that much. Bailey is in a completely different era. I'm telling you right now, the dogs are so much better now than what they were then. It's unbelievable. You can understand that because the sport's been around that long. These dogs now are getting trained right out, out of the, the litter. Uh, there's no doubt about that. That's arguable. But I got to tell you, Boomer, when he was four years old, beat Super Sue, a field champion. He beat Ritz, a, fi a field champion and national finalist, and beat uh, Ticket. So, I mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, I know he's, he's really playing up Bailey here, but, I mean, Boomer was a great dog at, at that age as well. So, and his mother, Millie, was also incredible. And look at this. Chris aiken has got her off the poison bird and right on line, <laughs> on the blind. You're watching a performance of a lifetime that for this boy. young dog right now. This, this blind was, look at that, boys and girls. by all accounts, undoable. She is right on the money. Listen to Chris. Easy. He knows it. He can sense it. Easy. She's going to miss it by about six feet. Easy. If, if she continues, there we go. A little bump to the left. And a girl. Just one little course correction. She sees it. Bottom bend. <clears throat> Here we go. She seizes it. Chris Aiken likes it. She has to stay under 118 total faults to break up the Steinman dynasty. 
She needs to hammer this is what she needs to do. Literally, she has absolutely no wiggle room here. Hey. If she doesn't step on this mark, which is a healthy mark, and it's burned about 10 minutes of memory, if she doesn't remember exactly where this mark is and she goes right or left more than three or four feet, it's not going to be good enough. Tension is mounting. The crowd watching Bailey, a four-year-old dog, 